Two years back, on the same day, we started our YouTube channel and uploaded the first video on Torque. Today, we are celebrating the second anniversary of our channel. I take this opportunity to thank all the subscribers for supporting us. We also recently completed 7k subscribers, so it's a happy moment too. Thank you all. Today, we are re-uploading our first YouTube video on Torque in the new avatar from what we learned from past two years. This is our way to celebrate. Sports cars, F1 cars, Teslas and heavy duty trucks. These almighty machines are what they are due to high torque. So what is actually torque? Let's untangle in this video. Torque by definition is the perpendicular force acting upon an axis from a distance. Let's understand torque by this illustrated example. Consider we want to move this car forward. So to do this, we'll rotate its wheels. For that, we'll make an arrangement like this, where a plank is connected to the center of the wheel to the front of the car. Now we'll put some weight at the end of the plank. As the weight will try to come down due to gravity, the plank will get tilted and in rotating the wheel, moving the car forward. Now, let's compare this example with the definition of torque. The perpendicular force is the force acting due to weight upon the axis that is the axis of rotation of the wheel from a distance that is the length of the plank. So the force acting due to the weight is trying to move the car forward. Now let's consider the same example for a heavy truck. Now if we use the same weight and same plank, will it move forward? Probably not because the truck is heavier hence requiring more force to gain momentum and if the truck is loaded then the task is even harder. So how can we solve this problem? We can put more weight at the end of the plank increasing the force resulting in more torque. So the truck now can move forward. Now if small car requires less force and a big truck needs more so why just we won't calculate torque in force? What's the use of the length from which it is acting like meter in newton meter or feet in pound feet? Here's why. If we take same example of truck and we don't have that much weight available, still we can move it forward. How? Just by increasing the length of the plank. If the length of the plank is increased twice, then you will need half the weight to move the truck forward. This is called as leverage or mechanical advantage. You can try this at home also. Go to the nearest door of your room, try to push that door with your finger from near the hinge, like this. See how much force you require. Now try doing the same thing, but this time longer from the hinge, near the handle, like this. And see how much force you require. You will observe that you required less force the second time. So basically, to move the same door, you require different amount of force, depending upon the leverage, means the distance from which the force is acting. You require less force from longer distance to displace the same door from the axis of rotation that is the hinge than shorter distance. This phenomenon of leverage you observe is same what is happening in our example. You need less force if the length of the plank is more and more force if the length of the plank is less. So torque depends upon both length and force. By using basic leverage formula you can understand why torque is product of force and length. Now let's discuss the unit of torque. The standard words are Newton meters, kg meter, pound feet. And all of these are product of force and distance. You can make your own units also, like gram centimeter, pound inch, or ton light year. Mm, maybe last one not useful. <laughs> That's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe the channel if you haven't yet, and hit the notification bell to get notified for future updates. As a for now, I'm signing off. See you guys in the next one.